She's created films like Teen Arada and Nam De Bhav. And today we'll be covering music video productions. We've all loved Cold Mess, Liggy and Sage. And we all want to know how and what went into the production of those. So yeah, I welcome you all and let Aryan take this over. Thank you so much, Madhu. And uh, thank you so much, da Daria, for doing this. Yeah, of course, of course, guys. I'm very happy to be here. Um, and yeah, let's start. The first question that I have for you, uh, it's it's quite it's quite cliched and must be getting it a, uh, a lot, uh, but it's interesting. I'm not sure if it's boring or not. Uh, what's the Scott will first... show. <laughs> of course. Uh, what's the very first thing that can drive you into the world of music video productions as a director? Like, what is it that uh, uh, a, say a short film or a feature film as an expression? Uh, does not allow you and this is something that you know you find yourself uh, exploring much more in music videos as an artist what what val what artistic value do, do your music videos hold for you um i, I don't know you know i, I don't think that uh, music videos give me something that the feature films can't give and that's why i'm doing it i just love the idea of creation um of course i can just go in like i can i can justify anything and tell you, you know that it's it's a long it's a short format at the same time um because it's uh, the time that you're spending on that allow you, let's say, to spend two weeks and not three months on that and experimenting and then the judgment is not as much as etc. But I don't know, I just think whatever we do, whether it's short film, whether it's a feature film, whether it's music videos, um, they have their own, let's call it benefits. But for me, it's not even benefits. For me, just creation and different creation have different impact on you. Of course, the... I, I was discussing recently with my team and we're uh, talking about that for us, whether we're shooting a music video or a feature film or writing series or working on any ads or even doing Zoom calls or Zoom, Zoom shoots, it kind of has the same value because the idea of creation, yes, of course, let's say feature film is in a way more responsible because you have bigger crew, you have a longer time you're spending on that, your pre-production, your production, your post-production takes so much more time. And then you're responsible for people, at least um, during the time of pandemic, you, um, you're responsible for your crew, right? Right now, for example, we're shooting in Delhi and we're shooting one of the ads and a couple of our people from our team um, got COVID, no matter how much we were trying to protect them. And of course, you as, um, as a head of your production, you, you feel responsible for them and, and their families. Um, and of course, on a longer format, that responsibility is even more because anything can happen on the set. And um, but it just the idea of creation is so unique, so unusual that I just love everything. I love everything. Whether uh, we are working on the set of music videos just and we're shooting for two days, whether we are shooting an ad, as I said, whether we are coming up with the idea, just, just writing a script, or whether we are coming up with the idea for an app or for a game for a mobile phone or um, any startup. I just love the idea of creation. Mm, I, I repeat it like seven times, definitely something wrong. You know, like people who re repeat the same things over and over again, it means that they're really insecure about them. I mean, I'm insecure about the creation. Yeah, but it just, it, it's fun. It just gives you this unique inspiration. And of course, on the one hand, music videos have um, less impact in terms of from, um, let's call it, audience responsibility. When you make a feature film, you have a lot of tears to feel. Here, you know, um, you know, it doesn't work out. You still can do other music videos and people just forget because of the duration, the amount of time they're spending to watch it. But I guess it, it depends. Like when I look back at three and a half or a I still am not happy with it, right? I know so many things would have changed, but um, it just, it taught me so much. It taught my crew so much. It made me what I am right now. Um, I think as filmmakers, we just need to remember that we are doing what we are doing again, not to go to those big fancy festivals or uh, hold those awards or shoot with some stars. And actually just have fun in our lives and have that fun with unique people who push you to evolve along with them. Yeah. So, but even in that, even in the, even with the idea of uh, uh, creation, that that that's what uh, appeals to you. But uh, when you're doing something uh, like, say, a Liggy or uh, a Sage or or any of the any of the music videos that you've done, uh, 
of course, the form of expression changes. Um, how, where do you find yourself there? Like, how do you, uh, how, like, what's your expression when it comes to, uh, like, okay, this is a story that's inherently being told through music. Uh, so how, how do you find yourself there? I mean, I'm not trying to find myself. I'm always there. Sometimes I'm just trying to run away from myself. Otherwise, it's like I'm always here with my head, with my hands, with my insecurities or ideas. And it's always there. I think through art, we're trying to always escape from ourselves and to make ourselves, ourselves slightly better on, or to give ourselves slightly more hope uh, that we can survive in this real weird world and be happy. So, I mean... I think whatever you do, it's always exploration of, uh, of yourself. And uh, it's always an experiment. You never know what kind of project will, will succeed or not. And when you, you know, when people say, oh, did I find my own voice through this creation or not? Well, it just depends. You can, if you can create five genius films, feature films or music videos, but then six would be completely, would suck. And not because you didn't work on that, but just coincidences, I don't know something couldn't reach the audience uh, because at the end of the day it is a um, mysterious art a part of numbers of people which are involved and craft which require you to uh, to be dedicated and to have certain level of um there's also some just weird coincidence i remember when we were shooting cold mass um the most unique part of it that i did tell me did after first day of shoot we were just like at home and we were pr we sent our footage uh, for processing and we were just praying that it, it will not be overexposed or some glitch will not happen d during the uh, you know during the entire process and because when you should let's say in film film is breathing right it's like its own entity its own existence and you never know how it will come out um when you shoot digitally you still don't know how it will come through the edit. You don't know whether the editor will be able to put that unique, unique story to, together. It's so many, so many random coincidences that you just, I guess only like God if it exists and some magic uh, decides the final product. And um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but, uh, what, what, I, what, I'm, uh, what I mean is that uh, when, you, when you're telling uh, inherently, like even though you try to run, your, uh, run away from yourself uh, and try to hide behind, the story that you're telling but uh once we see the music videos there's of course uh i mean one can still uh, figure out that okay this is what uh these are the these are the uh these are the things that concern a filmmaker uh once you're making a story like say in sage uh the, the, there's this uh, bittersweet quirk that you bring in with cold mess it's toxic relationships and the images so uh what i meant uh, to ask you is that uh with with this kind of a with this kind of a narrative, with this kind of a film, uh, like uh, music in music videos, how how do you arrive at a certain expression? How do you arrive at a certain form? Uh, very like you know, uh, just in terms of keep uh, how, how how do you get the images uh, in place, and how do you concept go about conceptualizing the whole thing? Um, again, it, it depends what kind of project we are working on, whether it's a music video, whether it's a feature film, what, what is the format, um, and I mean, of course, if you're telling a certain story, you will have to tell the story that bothers you, right? Or that touches you in a way. You want that story to be emotional. You want that story to be, um, to portray certain things that just simply bothers you. And I love emotions. I love the idea of feeling. I, when I talk to the different people, I like imagining what they, what they actually think right now while they're talking to me how they feel physically, mentally, and it's just so interesting to be in someone else's skin. And um, even like, I don't know, your enemies or people who annoy you, when you imagine how, how it is to be them, you realize that you're overwhelmed with so many different emotions that always in a way justifies what you do or how you, how, how you lead your life. And I think that's quite unique. Oh, wow, guys. Yeah, that's the light suddenly. Yeah. Suddenly it came out. You see that? This is what I'm saying, guys. This is what I'm saying. This weird coincidences, right? Like when I'm saying something and then just the light comes up. I think that this is what we are um, looking looking forward, right? Like those magical things. I mean, you see, life is just um, full of unpredictability. Yeah. So um, I love emotional stories, as I said. I love um, 
trying to feel those butterflies. You know, I say, said it several times at different interviews that, you know, when you're in, in the school and there is a person whom you like and you, you, you feel those butterflies or summer camp and that boy just or a girl, uh, they just pass by and, and you feel overwhelmed with something. And how to recreate that? How, how can I make my audience feel that? Because I like those feelings. I, uh, sometimes when I feel jealous or I, I feel my own ego or I'm getting irritated, if I'm able to separate myself from that and just to understand my own body, my mind feels that, can I make my audience feel that? For me, it's always exciting. And I'm always thinking how to, how to deliver those emotions on this paper first and then on the screen. It's always a struggle, it's, um, but, but it's exciting. So that's, that's I guess, my first uh, idea of creation let's say with sage i wanted to when i heard the song i was i i was sitting on the balcony of our office and i just kept playing it again and again and i just let my brain imagine different stories that can happen and so then i saw this like really tall boy i'm like what if he falls in love with the uh, girl who's shorter than him and and then of course uh, i was thinking what kind of hero's journey it can be where we start where we end or um, even, even when it's not your own idea, let's say with Ligi, when Deed came up with the idea for Ligi, by the way, he came out while um, visiting art museum, I think, we were art gallery, and he saw one really old painting and he came up with it, he told me, like, oh my God, I loved it. And I start thinking, how, how do you feel on that first day after your wedding? Is it awkward? It's not, it's kind of, new house which is yours but it's not yours but you still want to be yourself and can i can i represent that can i show that um yeah and, oh, and then of course you are following certain structure certain formula that i'm saying that i i, I realize right now especially in the process of working uh, for a series right now that the difference between amateurish writer and professional when you can see finally i am a writer i'm a director is that who doesn't just follow their passion or just intuitive writing or just oh you know because I, I i write it because i feel it but who knows how to force themselves to write even when they don't want to when they know they have a skill they have tools to write it because very often especially with, like with young age when we start writing and we're feeling overwhelmed in it but can we do it again can we make our ourselves feel like that again can we force ourselves to feel inspirational or not. Most of the time, not. And this is when we feel kind of down. But to be saved from those downers is just to work on your skill, to read books on screenwriting, to read bo books on, on, on filmmaking, because it's the only thing that can save you when you're not sure how to get that inspiration back. Yeah. And uh, like what I meant to ask uh, with, with, with this thing that okay, uh, you can you heard the song and you kind of thought of uh, stories around it and uh, at times uh, there are like of course different kind of music videos and there are certain music videos which are non-narrative which are very uh, expressionistic or one might say uh, they're, they're much more uh, in the sense they're much more sensory um, what uh, do you think uh, making a music video which uh, taking a non-narrative approach might uh, uh, how, how would you uh, once you just, if you go back to all your music videos, if you hadn't thought of a story uh, in, in those music videos, how else would you have approached it? Do you ever, like, think about um, it? You know, I, each story, each song de demands certain style of narrative. Mm, I would love to do something which is just very abstract. I would love to do just like really you, you, you cool rap video. <laughs> uh, but just somehow the stories which are coming to me, um, the songs which are coming to me, they have also certain restrictions. For example, you know that the uh, musicians don't want to be uh, in front of the camera or musicians is awkward to be in front of the camera. So you ca it's not, let's say Kanye West, right? Who, who is comfortable to be in front of the camera. Um, so then you know that you need actors. If you need actors, most of the times you, you would need the story if the song demands. If the song is more visual, um, then you're coming up with more visual stories. I. I keep saying that I just I would love to create new language for like the crap music videos in India because I think we just we have so so much potential but we either go really low budget or we are going trying to copy the West 
And I don't think it serves us um, anything good because our culture is so unique, our aesthetics is so unique, but we haven't explored it yet. Um, and so guys, there are just so, so many things to explore right now in India, whether it's in music video space, storytelling is not just the only way um, to, to tell music video narrative. It can be so many different ways, but I think even if you go visual, there's still a story, right? Um, what, what kind of story you are telling us? Uh, it's, is it about your associations? Is it about your feelings? Is it about uh, the way how you see the world through colors? It's still a story and we need to be clear about that story so that the audience also can understand it. Otherwise it becomes very self-indulgent. You're like, you know, I'm just telling a story because I feel so. Mm, yeah, but, but the, the percentage of, of success can be a bit tricky in, in that case. I mean, right now we have again unique era when there's OTT platforms. When I entered industry, I remember even to get job as a AD, was absolutely impossible. Even to get a job just to be on the set, very tricky. Um, now, when we were recently looking for a project and we, we needed an experience DA, all DAs are taking. All of them are working either on, on, on feature films or some ODP series. And so everyone is busy and that's incredible. It means that demand is really, really high. And um, you now guys, as, as, as you know, experienced filmmakers or as, as just starting out filmmakers, you have a unique platform that you can explore. But what will make us different from previous generation and from everyone around is concentration on our skill. Because as I said, your talent and your intuition maybe will work with your first film, maybe with second film. But at some point of time, you will feel that you're stuck how I felt. And at those moments, as I said, only skill can help you out. And each and every person is looking, each and every director whom I know, cinematographer who I know, always looking for talented, intelligent, uh, hardworking people, no matter how, how full their teams are. But you just need to understand how, how do you stand out from all those people, right? And just to work on the skill. Like right now, so Pete, who is also Ariana, uh, helping you to organize this, uh, we are co-writing with her a project, and um, we just keep discussing with Supreet how important it is to develop as many skills as possible, because then you can you can give so much more to your team, right? Even I don't know if you dance or if you speak some random languages or you have uh, I don't know if you skateboard, uh, any additional skill it just like adds to your to your team and makes it unique yeah so uh, talking about that skill set of yours once you were when you were uh, developing your skill set like before you probably made your first music video uh, what what was it that went into that uh, like of that of, of the honing of your skills like how did you uh, kind of cultivate your craft um reading 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 books and reading not just I mean, of course, on screen writing, but then fiction books, because fiction books help you to develop visual skills. Sometimes you think just binge watch stuff will help you, but uh, no, because what is binge watching? Binge watching, it's something that people already cooked food for you and you're just consuming. Mm, but you need to learn yourself how to cook food. And for that, you need to start learning how to imagine things, right? From nothing to something, just even if it's in your head. And that's why books are just helping you out because it's not someone has thought about the idea and already visually executed it. It's just written. And then your brain has to train itself, almost go to the gym, read the book, imagine, imagine something. And um, yeah, it, it just, it's, it's a food, it's a gym for your brain, which is important. Then, and then of course, practice, just continue shooting no matter what. I, I was shooting ads, some really low budget ads low budget short films music videos when i just wanted to see whether I'll, I'll be able to do it whether i'll be able to find the right team whether i'll be able to express myself and I, and the most important thing just tell the story that you want to tell that's the most important thing not just copy um, i don't know some music videos that you are inspired by great you're inspired by but do you feel the same thing let's say i don't know um if um i am watching normal people and I decide to do music video on toxic relationships like cold mask. Do I want to tell it because it just looks cool or because I actually went through something very similar and I want to tell people that it's okay to feel this way. 
There is nothing wrong in that. Um, because I sometimes a lot of people sending me their music videos and short films, and um, of course there are two things. One, sometimes I just scroll scroll through to see the cinematography, and if it's completely bad, um, sometimes I don't watch it till the end because I feel. I mean, on the one hand, of course, you have limited time, but also you know that the aesthetics of the, of the person is not very developed, right? Um, and you really hope that next time when the same person will sh uh, send you something, the aesthetics would be better. Uh, but if the narrative is strong, if it makes you feel something, then doesn't matter how it looks, doesn't matter uh, what budget uh, of it is. But sometimes, again, I feel that it's very lazy filmmaking, that it's more that, I just want to be a filmmaker. That's why I want to shoot something instead of I want to express something or I want to explore something. And that's why I make films. Do you know, uh, like you're talking about aesthetics. Do, uh, do you know, uh, like do, do you look at music videos that uh, uh, have inspired by Cold Mist written all over them? Uh, I, I don't know what's like all over them, but sometimes I, 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 I'm I thinking, is it, is it expired, uh, inspired by that or not? When someone from my team shares it, uh, and I, I, I mean, I, it's it, it's super sweet and uh, very inspiring. Um, and I'm just talking uh, about the cover videos. I'm just I'm talking about like you know, uh, like here's the thing, uh, like we're, we're student filmmakers, right? And uh, uh, after Cold Mess came out, uh, the music video came out. Everyone was suddenly making uh, music videos about uh, you know they had used to have this like kind of like a very bluish uh, uh, wall or somewhere in the contrast there must be yellow. <laughs> and they used to cut back and forth and uh, there's an aesthetic that you uh, kind of uh, started uh, you know you started something out uh, uh, with that music video that people still copy a lot so uh, when you see uh, something like that uh, at times you find that okay uh, it's just like maybe maybe just the, just the style that they're ripping off of but they have something to say in those videos but you know i never feel that oh you know they're ripping off i i feel it it's um i first of all it's it's, it's, a, it's a very flattering it's very inspiring um, and I never feel bad or like, oh my God, it's just a copy. I have a couple of filmmakers who feel insulted even when <laughs> their ads are coming out and then someone tries to copy any trick, like editing style. And they're like, oh my God, it's just like my ad. And I'm like, I mean, it's a, it's a compliment. Someone finds it inspiring. That's great. Doesn't matter. I have two feature films, which one feature film, which was adapted by two production houses where when I was just starting out, I sent synopsis to, to them. And then it came out exactly like my synopsis, which was like 10 pages. And I, I make a full just send everyone. And then I have a um, scene um, that friend of, friend of acquaintance of mine, whom I read the script to, and then he completely copied the entire scene with the dialogues to his film. But I never felt like, oh my God, I just happened. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll come up with some more ideas. Okay, you, you heard that's a... There's yeah. a thunder. Yes, you see, again, magic. I just said, I'll come up with more ideas. And there was like this thunder. Wow, that's that's incredible. That This is what, this is what I love exploring, you know, like real life. Well, Not rare, just to... That rarely happens. It mostly happens with you. I mean, I've seen in other videos <laughs> as well. I mean, once you say something, there's like, there's a WhatsApp message stick, like, ting, there's something that happens. It's like almost, I mean, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right, it happened. But like, like, like this sound, right? And I just felt so alive at this moment of time. And this is what I want to explore, you know, to play with that fucking sound design. Always have issues with sound design. I recently found some really good ones, but sometimes it's, it's really difficult because I just love different sounds and play around with it. And, and just to make this experience unique, right? And, and this is, I feel, what we need to do as filmmakers. From there, like, see, uh, a lot of like, there's this very interesting question that uh, 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 Avik asked. Uh, do you visualize your edit while you come up with these uh, stories for your music video? Oh, great, for great question, Avik. Yeah, every time when I feel I write, even write sometimes with the, uh, like, with certain cues for for the editor. Like my editor, he uh, when he reads the script, he knows exactly how he needs to edit. And usually, I don't like too much freedom in in the in in editing. Uh, just to shuffle the sequences because I feel when I write, I'm trying to visualize so that the audience can go through a certain journey. And if you just put them other way around because it looks cool, we'll just lose certain narrative that was put there to make you feel something. Uh, 
it, right now when we are writing series, even there, I I imagine each beat where it will be fast montage when we're going slightly slower. Um, and then of course, after a screenplay, you do the same thing with, uh, with short breakdown. I never, I never been on the set without short breakdown. I, 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 I sometimes I feel I have a nightmare when I'm on the set and I don't have a short breakdown because there are just so many, it, it, it's like your guide, it's like your compass. Even if you want to improvise, improvise, you can improvise, but you can always come back and, you know, kind of rely on your short breakdown if something, um, if you forgot something or, uh, because short breakdown, it's, um, it's 99%, 95% of how your music video or feature film will look like. Um, and then of course storyboard, if you are a fan of storyboards so that you, your team can imagine what exactly you see in your mind, which is also important. Uh, and once you have all that, it's a, it's a 80% less stress on set. Yeah, and you do storyboard, right? Like you, you storyboard uh, like everything before going? I mean, it, it depends how much time we have for for example, called mess. Supreet was for three days non-sleep. Uh, she was just uh, storyboarding the entire music video. Uh, for Liggy, I didn't because there were so many long takes that um, I didn't need to storyboard. But of course, I had short breakdown. Um, three and a half, of course, because it was just long take. I didn't do it. Uh, Namri Babu didn't have time to storyboard. Um, I, I, I have st storyboarded. Um, a Paco's video with Jim um, about the clones because um, I, I need to see how VFX will look like and whether VFX will look real or not and to give re reference to production design as well. So I storyboarded that as well. Um, the name for this hold tight, very under uh, appreciated music videos of ours. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, like before going on to the set, you said that, you know, it gives you like kind of like nightmares that you don't have a short breakdown. But uh, in a in a music video, say like Leggy, like where it's very unpredictable, and we saw you in the BTS video, you like you know it's she, she's really you know uh, she's she's not under some sort of a constraint there, and you have uh, a very uh, unpredictable editing pattern as well. So how much of that was uh, pre visualized, and did you discover something new while you shot or something new that uh, on the edit? I can't say that there was something unpredictable for me. It was very clear uh, how I want this to look. And again, script was saying each and every beat of the dance, um, almost each and every movement. And I imagined how the dance also would look like. And because again, limited time, I was showing her what I think that I want to do. Maybe if we had bigger budget and more time, I would have spent much more time on um, acting workshops and then I, I would have been giving more freedom to the actor instead of just showing but sometimes it's just a faster way of getting exactly what you wanted if you have a very clear picture of that and I had that mm. and it was very stressful shoot uh, a lot of uh, unpredictable things from production design to camera movements we were shooting for three days double shifts on both of the days um, very tricky very uh, yeah i mean very stressful but i i still remember i was just next to the vanity when when, when vidika was, was changing and i was like guys honestly i think it'll be either our really big fail or it will be an incredible music video and the team was like yeah because even they didn't know what it would be among these two options so uh, i still don't know no it's it, it it came out great i mean everyone loves it and it was some th th so the reason why i felt that it was very unpredictable is because and and to know now that it was everything that you pre visualized it's 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 some, something else completely so uh, once you get a music track uh, uh, first of all uh, do you think it's really important to have that kind of a clarity beforehand while making music video um i mean see i think everyone has their own way of making stuff i can right now be diplomatic and say, you know, it depends on you, but let's let just be slightly more like clearer. I would say, yes, it's very, very important, especially unless of course you're part of, uh, I don't know, dogma movement with uh, Lars von Trier, you know, and his team, and you just want to improvise, but then just create the movement, you know, create the uh, the rules and follow the rules and, and fucking read and understand this, the, the history of cinema and, uh, you know, watch all the masters and then 
come up with the, with the movement that you want to follow. And if not, then you need to, you need to be clear what you're doing because you have brought all these people. You have, in a way, you activated your ego, which wants to tell the story. So you, you need to deliver that and you need to explain your excitement to your team and why they need to be as excited as you are. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's I think it's important. Um, it, it's very simple. More you more you are prepared, more clearer you are what you want to create. More improvisation you will be able to do on the set because it's like with the actors. Um, if I haven't, if you, any of you have experience with um, acting, you remember that you can improvise only when you know the text by heart. Um, Otherwise, it just becomes very difficult. Sometimes, of course, you can have success, but it, it, it's it's rare. Um, it's more like a magical coincidence. You, you can't always rely on. <clears throat> so yeah, so clarity is important, and communication is important, and empathy, empathy is important. We need to remember that as a director, most of the things are in our head, and we need to explain what's in our head to our team instead of just. And when someone don't understand it, instead of just shutting down and. Uh, flipping on them, we need to find the ways to inspire because we're not just we're not employed or we're not em employees. We're creators. So if someone doesn't believe in the way the way how you believe in something, you need to find the ways how to inspire them. You need to be in a way um, I don't know gurus, right, um, for them and then disciples as well for them. Um, yeah. So once you, uh, someone's asked here that uh, once you get a music, like once you get the track, uh, how do you, like, what's the first thing that you do? Like, how do you start, like, how do you go about it while, while creating a music video, of course? Like, I mean, I, uh, so someone else had this, uh, a similar question, uh, that say, like, it's with songs. Uh, you don't really, like, they're very random. I mean, uh, it's, it's almost like a murmur. And uh, from there, picking up stories which are, may or may not be directly uh, connected mm. to the to the to the music uh, how do you go about it like how do you arrive at it after once you've gotten a music track i don't believe that we need to show on the screen what we hear like i i'm at least i'm not excited to to create those stories that, oh you know where you're saying and then i went to the park and then you're showing how you are walking and then shot shot of the park right um, because the idea is to create the layers. Anyway, we see something and anyway, we hear something. So can we, instead of just copying and just making thicker the copies of the copies of the copies of our senses, can we kind of just push it around and create the wider um, involvement of our, or involvement of our senses? Um, Sometimes, of course, you can do that to push a certain effect, like um, let's say in cold mass, when there is a line, when your uh, or the, the, the toes touch your toe, right, or something like that. Uh, of course, the, we took the close-up of the toes because I felt that it's very intimate, but um, it was planned not because of the line, but because of the association and intimate feelings and memories that audience could be provoked by or to feel something. So sometimes I don't even, oh, I don't know. I read, I read the lyrics. I always ask my team to write me down so I can just read, read it again and again, the song, the lyrics, but I never put a target to go line by line in terms of visual representation. I just listen to it and I imagine the visuals. And then I just offer it to the composers uh, or musicians. And sometimes they're not on the same page. And then you're like, okay, fine, cool, great. And then we are doing it together. But if they are, they believe in your vision, then you can go ahead. Because sometimes musicians has they have very very strong vision, and sometimes it works, but sometimes also it works against them. Um, same as with directors. Sometimes you're hundred percent sure it will work, but sometimes um, you don't know that. I think with let's say Kasur, it was um, for me interesting experiment. No one in the team believed that it will work. Uh, Pratik had fear that it will look just like a cheap um, video of, you know, just questions popping up. Um, Deer was not sure. Even I was not hundred percent sure. But somewhere deep down, my intuition said, "I it might be. It will if it will if it works. It can be very unusual." And um, and I want to experiment with that. 
So of course you can't be 100% sure whether it will be success. You need to be somewhere in between. You need to be not cocky enough just to irritate your team, but just slightly more confident. <laughs> so uh, exactly, it spoke about Kasur and uh, how do you, like uh, Sanjay has asked that, uh, how do you get the true emotional responses from so many people that go so well with the final edit? Like how did you guys manage to get put that together? So with, with um, the idea came before the lockdown and I, I told Pratik to do it before, uh, yeah, before lockdown, but they were not sure. Then the COVID happened and nothing um, else we could do. So then we decided to go with it. For me, um, it w- I want to design it in a way that I will send the videos to people, which would be, um, it would be a letter which says, hi guys. You know, this is um, Jugar team and please follow the instruction, press the button record, put your phone here, put your laptop there, start recording yourself and now open the video. The video was opening and it was saying, hey guys, you know, and it, it was, uh, the, the font was designed in a very particular way. So and the, they designed um, the graphics of it, white background with the text, with the yellow elements and each part of it, was in a way influencing the way how we perceive it. Because even font can be happy, can be rotating, can be stylish, can be emotional or not. Uh, combination of colors can cause certain emotions. So I want to cause those emotions. And then how I build it from, hi guys, are you ready? When was the last time you know you kissed someone? Or, and then you, you know the people will be like, oh, what? <laughs> and then when the last time you had sex? And so you want to shock a bit like, people and they're like mm, what and then then you would ask slightly more neutral questions and then you would ask emotional question after emotional question you would ask one more which is slightly more detailed and you know that people because also of the music on the background which was playing along with this video of the questions would make them feel more comfortable more open up and then you will try to take care of them because as creator, you can't just squeeze out emotions from your actors or from people you collaborate with just to, to get what you wanted. You want to give them closure. So, you, so then you would like, you would ask something silly and then they will just laugh. And then you will ask one more emotional question. And then again, you will take care of them by um, saying something comforting. And then you will just uh, ask them, can you just like send magical energy to everyone who sees it and be, you know, doing all that. So then you created the graph, the way how we create graph, first act, second act, third act. Um, while writing a script, I was trying to design it the same way how I would ask the question and how they would reply to that. Um, yeah, and according to me, it, would, it, it should have worked. And I tested on myself, trying to imagine and answer these questions in front of the mirror uh, several times. I tested on, on a couple of more people around me, on my team, and uh, on my friends. And I felt it would work. Then we send it. And I was waiting for first hand videos to, to come back just to see, is there anything or not? Then 10 videos came out. I checked them. And some people were just like laughing, <laughs> giggling. Some person was just like looking back. And then, hmm. and when I saw that simple, like simple real reaction, I knew that we, we will get the video. And then of course, when I saw people crying, I'm like, great. We'll get the emotion and then we got I think around like 700 videos I thought I would be able to go through all of them it was each video was two and a half minutes and I thought I would be able to scroll through it but I couldn't because even if it's a small thing let's say I'm, I'm, I'm reading the text and then I'm just like if I needed that you know I needed a moment of thinking or that moment of like right so I, I, I had to go through it. Um, I went to, I think only hundred of them spent two days and my poor editor had, had to go through everything. And when I watched it, I felt overwhelmed with emotion. So when that happened, I knew that it will also work for other people. I usually just test on my own reaction. Does it work for me? Do I feel something? Or even when my directors um, direct something they send to me, do I have that smile on my face or not? And if I have it, most most probably audience also will have it. Yeah. So uh, going uh, like going back a little bit, and when you said that you know it's not necessarily the uh, like what 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 the song is in, in its literal sense. Uh, 
once you get these ideas, uh, say, uh, of, of, you know, getting people to record the videos or uh, like the taller boy or something, uh, do, you, uh, like, do you mean that you respond much more to the sound than the text? Mm. What do you mean? Uh, like when, like there's always like a, every song has a certain kind of a sound, right? Like you know, it it gives you a, like in a very sensory uh, way. Yes. Like, so do you respond much more to that? Uh, much more to the even more than the melody. It goes beyond melody. That you know, a certain song has a certain kind of a vibe. So yes, yes, I I think so. Um, like Ritwi's music, for example, has something. Uh, like one of the reasons why I keep collaborating with him is that. Um, it's not about even me liking his music or not. It's about he has a bittersweet emotion in build in, in most of the things that he does. And that bittersweet works for my kind of stories that also I love doing, right? When you feel like moved, but at the same time inspired, but at the same time sad. And um, uh, Pratik has also very delicately attached to that. Uh, I think it, it just it, it depends, but of course I I I never do a part of one project. Um, I am trying not to do projects that I'm not moved by or inspired by. I would love to do, as I said, rap video like um, heavy metal music video, but I don't come to me yet. Uh, so yeah, so I would say yes. Yeah. So um, yeah, someone uh, has a very uh, interesting question. Uh, so they say that I have three music with, uh, music tracks ready and want to shoot them and release so that uh, so what would be the my minimum costing for music like how, okay take take us a little bit uh, uh, into the uh, into the workings of the industry for like once if someone has a music video and they want to put it out how do you approach like how do you get it released uh, it, it's it's a general question everyone has asked. I mean it depends whether you are working with the label whether you're not working with the label whether you're a um, musician filmmaker or you are or you're doing it as a, because someone asked you i mean it, it depends if you're an independent filmmaker and you have a friend who's doing music video your budget can be from five rupees that you're spending on chai in a village to 10 lakhs if, if, if your parents are from south delhi right so i think it, it just depends on um on where you're coming from and w what's your target mm. Nam, the budget of Nam De Bao was a budget of one of our music videos that all of you know, you know. Um, the budget of three and a half was the budget of another music video that you saw. Um, some music video of ours is just like a zero, zero budget, maybe like 50,000 rupees. I mean, of course not zero budget, but um, for the scale that we went for, it is zero budget. Some of them, we um, we didn't charge anything, it's actually zero budget. Some of them, anything between five lakhs to 60 lakhs. Um, so it, it depends. Mm, I uh, There's also a question about what would be the costing of the videos to be shot yeah. as, as my style. Again, it depends. I uh, Nowadays, I um, it can be any anything from 17 lakhs to to a crore, uh, if it if if we are working with the um, with the label or with the brand, a lot of brands are very funny. They will spend crores on ads, which is thirty seconds, but uh, when it's a music video which is four minutes and they want to their brand to be present, they don't want to spend any money. So for that, I'm I'm always mm, trying to be very bullish because I think we need to be fair to musicians and crew and filmmakers who are working for it. Um, and we need to educate industry about the costs. If, if we're doing something independent, it can be zero budget. But if we're doing, doing anything for the brand, we need to teach them that art needs to be appreciated if they're planning to um, earn from us, right, in a way. So again, it, it, it absolutely depends um, what scale you're going with. If you have a friend, how I have a friend, Aditya Varma, who has his camera and he's also color grading and he's editing. Um, you can just shoot it our style, how you ask the question in just 5,000 rupees because you can do gorilla style. Uh, actors will do it for free. Production design, you can just find a good houses of different people 
So you don't actually need any money uh, for that. You just need to have a smart producer or to be producer of yourself. Mm. Yeah, so I guess, guys, I, I know it's slightly vague, but unfortunately it just works like that. It j absolutely depends. Um, you can also make a music video in 50 lakhs, but which will look absolute shit and it will feel that people don't sp didn't spend any money on that. Um, everything depends on your team and whether they know how to make something look five times more expensive than it is. But uh, like, tell us something like, if someone has, uh, you know, someone's not working with a label, someone doesn't have, if they've made a music video from scratch, like nothing, literally nothing, but it, it might, they feel like that it's, you know, it, it's good and uh, there's something there. Uh, how should they go about getting that uh, music video released? Just released, just so that it finds an audience. Not just I'm not talking. I about mean, them. if it's even if you have so many different way, uh, options. If it's really good, you can put on YouTube. Um, it can go viral by itself if it's something unique. Then you can collaborate with other artists. You can write anyone who has their own channels from musicians themselves, like a twist, for example, to. Um, any of influencers, gamers, anyone in India who they need any content on their website or on, on YouTube or Instagram. And usually they are really looking forward to put out something cool. So right now we are making a music video for one of a young rapper and he doesn't have any label. We are, we are just trying, we are trying to present him and um, we will be putting it out on the platforms of one of the musicians in the country, because um, if it's good, anyone will, will, would love to do that, right? It's just that, for example, if you will create a unique music video and you will ask Jugar to put it, let's say on the Instagram page, you know, I would want that, uh, we would love to do that. Mm, yeah, it, it just, it depends on the content. So approaching influencers, approaching musicians, um, and if you don't get any reply, you can put it out on YouTube, or maybe it means that um, somehow the music video is not appealing to people, but uh, still you can have a shot and put it out yourself on your own YouTube. Yeah. So if, if someone's made a music video, they can send it to Jugard. Uh, like, does it pick out? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Great. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and is Jugard hiring story writers? Uh, I had, uh, is awesome. As I said before, guys. Any production houses, any directors, always looking for writers, good DAs, good ADs. Uh, I mean, right now, ADs, of course, is, is very tricky because um, we're in pandemic. But I'm, I'm always looking for interns who know how to use Photoshop, who can co-create with us great decks for the pitches that we have for OTT platforms, uh, and uh, good writers. And because how... How can you admit someone in, admit in your team if you don't know exactly that person, right? So then internship helps. So even if it means you will need to do DAX and just sending out emails, it's, it's great because then you can also prove your ability. Like when Supreme joined, Supreme joined just as a storyboard and as a, in a way, um, not even PA. It was just like internship. Now she's co-creating a show with me. And um, because I, in, the, in that process of work, when I was giving her, any errands to to uh, to do, she just proved herself as a, such a hardworking and talented person. That and you always want to create something with talented people. So yes, we, we do look for um, story writers who are hardworking, ready to work twenty four seven, want to create something. At the same time, have ability to work on their skills because, as I said, you are writer only when you have skills in your hands. You can't be a professional sportsman if you haven't practiced for those years and years and years, right? There was, you're just like a maturish uncle who's running sometimes, you know, in the streets of Bombay. But if you want to be a professional, you have to be ready and prepare your body for half marathon and then marathon and then ultra marathon. Yeah. So, so read, um, guys, read, 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 please read. Last, um, because I, again, as I, as I said, everyone right now needs really good writers. Everyone needs really good DAs. Everyone needs, talented cinematographers and to stand out from them just get your theory right not just here you know i just watched um narrow italian narrowism wave i know all directors by heart will not help 
what do you know from the actual physical in a way skills how many screen writing books you read how many books on direction you read how many acting books you read if you want to be a director if right now i put you together with with my with, with the actors will you be able to conduct seven days workshop with them and all this is important because this is what makes you professional from amateurish so yeah uh, what are some other books that you would like to recommend to everyone like they should like must oh be? my favorite answer <laughs> to answer um i think the speed right now will share if if you speed online oh this is guys this is the speed this is the mm -hmm. speed you said you see i was just finishing the sentence in that second super just sent you and shared with you a book list that i have created for my team to read mm, they have it, it has some professional in um recommendation book wise but a lot of it, a lot of it has fiction which is extremely important to read and um, usually i don't talk to my team if they haven't finished let's say 20% of the books um from this list wow wow my dear if it doesn't even watch the films that i recommend them so films <laughs> uh and like i know it was very vague and sounded weird but the only thing that you can get from it is just another slap and push and just please please after this conversation just don't open your your laptop and check facebook oh my god that, that's my age to speak or like checking your instagram or just like messaging your friend and, uh, and opening whatsapp have a book to read have a story to write make a rule that every day no matter what i will write for one hour if you are writer director i will read acting books if you are actor i will watch those tutorials uh, on cinematography and lenses and angles work on your craft if you don't work on the craft amount of films that you watch amount of kitchen conversation that you have with your friends uh, about films it will not change anything you might be extremely lucky and and you will be genius but i am not genius percentage of being genius is very very low and high percentage of it maybe we are not among them but we can put that aside but push ourselves to work on the skills because this is what industry needs right now and maybe we can make the future of our, our industry much better when it will be relying not on on random talent but on very solid incredible skills okay <laughs> let's go shri she has an uh, question yes. yeah shri please hi dar guy hi so i have uh, already asked a couple of questions uh, and uh, thanks to aryan uh, for asking those uh, now uh, i am uh, at a situation uh, where i already have three music uh, track ready so uh, it would what would be the difference of costing when it is coming to label and non label supposingly a production company like t series sare gama pa and so whatsoever if i pitch them with the video ready uh what would be the charging and uh, if not how would i be able to get my returns i mean it depends um uh do you have also a deal with the musician that you made this music videos for yes of course um uh, i mean i have taken over the entire uh, thing start from the production shoot editing everything the only thing where i am stuck is uh, of course marketing also uh, is considered in that only thing i'm unable to uh, you know convince the investor uh, about the returns and he is okay with the labor or, or without the labor so i just wanted to understand if i go to t series whether it will be helpful or if i don't go to a t series or a youtube channel how would i get my returns i mean honestly getting returns on music videos are very very low very low because even uh, even if you put on youtube and your music video will get um 5 million views i'm not sure what the the numbers there but what we are getting paid in india for our youtube channel for 1 million view is much less than in other countries so unless it will go like 200 million views um uh, even in that case i'm not I, again depending on what your budget is but it's very unlikely that um you will get get it back unless uh, of course there is a brand involved right or the musicians themselves they are paying for it to promote themselves yes there is a very high opportunity if you will let's say approach 
there are several um, labels, as you said, T series. There's a, right now also Big Bang. Uh, what is to be Big Bang? Big Bang something. Supreme I'm not right now. Yeah, I think Supreet would write on the chat. It's our friends who've done also a couple of music videos for them. Um, so you can ap approach them. They have uh, not not Japan, Big Bang, uh, Big Bang, no, something, I don't know. I think Supreet I will, will later on. I can I can share with you. If you write me on Instagram, I'll just share uh, the um, owners, uh, the person who owns the, uh, sure. the label. Uh, yeah, this Big Bang, ah, Big Bang Music. So you can approach them, but again, it will depend on that they will like the musician or not, right? If they see that there is a future in that musician, uh, most probably if they, let's say Big Bang or T-Series, um, they will like the musician, most probably they will also acquire the musician um, because they need to see the, uh, the bigger picture, right? For them, return investment is only if they, see the future in that musician and to rap, uh, rap him. Um, T-Series has, they have good budgets. Usually they have good budgets for Punjabi uh, songs or for any regional songs that can be extremely massy and therefore also massy music videos that uh, will also cater to tier two, tier three CDs. Um, Big Bang has a um, different approach to also, they have a very huge mar market in Punjab. Um, so uh, you see, it um, really depends on also, is it, is it, is it rap? Is it a rap song? If it's a rap song that most probably will approach, um, let's say Ranveer Singh's company, right? Uh, or, um, yeah, I mean, there's so many different op uh, opportunities for us to, uh, approach people just depending on the genre. Is it massive? Is it not massive? Is it rap? Is it indie? Is it not indie? Uh, is it Hindi? Is it uh, Tamil? So we need to understand, depending on that, what search to play. If it's just a Hindi massive song, then definitely you should try to approach the series and just to see how much they will offer. Um, usually, uh, and if it's a known unknown person and they see potential, uh, I don't see it be more than five to 15 lakhs that they will offer, at least from, from my understanding. But of course, there are always exceptions if they see extreme talent and growth of the artists. But music videos, you know, um, uh, labels, they don't look at music videos as IP. They look only as a musician. You can create the most beautiful music video and they still will look at the musician, whether the musician will give them return or not. So, um, Ayush, uh, unmute yourself and please go ahead. Hi, Dar. Thank you so much for your Hi, time. Ayush. How are you doing? See, Ayush, I'm, I'm happy. You, you, you're the one who understood my sense of humor. <laughs> I did, I did. I have a couple of Ayush, questions. Ayush is, for... a, is, a, is, a really, is a really, really talented uh, filmmaker who refused to work in Jugar and, um, yeah, because he was just too talented, too, too talented for us. And... Wow. Um, yeah that's not true <laughs> thank you so much yeah, that's, that's very kind of you i i've moved from a filmmaker to a producer entrepreneur in the last one year but you I see that's brain i used i always had a lot of faith in you I, I always knew that you're just too smart to like this is this is a great decision I, honestly i think with the producing it's it's exactly what our country needs right now i was just shooting right now with some something um for dharma and um, you see all these young eds right and some of them, they, you know, they still uh, belong to that old school. I want to be director. And yeah, of course, it's incredible. But producing is something that is just evolving in our country. And we need producers so much. Right now, Jugar, for example, needs good producers. We have so many projects. And I have only Pranit and Deer to handle it. But um, more producers you have, more growth of the industry you will have. Correct. 100%. I wanted to ask what are some of the good practices as a producer to follow and how do you keep the team motivated throughout? Because I feel it's not just about getting, uh, you know, the cheapest deal or just curating everything. I think it's also about motivating the entire team with the mm. And in general, what are some of the good practices, not in terms of the art, but on the logistical side of things? I mean, 
uh, in your case, it's a, it, it just incredible bonus that you're also a talented director and you're a talented cinematographer and editor. So then when you will be producing, what you are producing would be um, much better than a lot of people because you have a very strong aesthetical sense. So you will be pushing uh, your director to deliver better things. You will push editor to deliver better things. Like Deer, for example, as a producer, he has incredible aesthetical sense. Sometimes we fight on set because I don't care sometimes about aesthetics. I just want to, to get emotions, right? But because of that clash, we are able to create something unique. And so for me, that's, you already have huge advantage. And anyone who wants to be producer is important to understand and to practice and editing and cinematography and direction. Um, of course, the best way is to put project together, to, um, depending how do you see the trajectory, um, right now there's so many different production houses, they are looking for producers, so you can go under them, or you can put together a project. If you're able also to get financer, and guys, please remember that producer is not the one who finances, he can, director also can uh, finance his own film, but the producer is the one, he's actually captain of the ship. He's the one who creates everything. In Eastern Europe, we have, um, it always say, says director of the film and director of the film means producer, director, you know, like director in the company. And then it says um, re regisseur. So um, you have an opportunity also to put together a project by yourself, just, to find a fin financier to let's say find 15, 20 lakhs and actually to shoot a feature film or to shoot a pilot of a series. Um, if you can't find financier, um, just put together a team, find the most important thing, find the story that you want to tell, hmm. find a script that you want to tell. Is it series? Is it a feature film? Is it a documentary? Let's say you decided what is it among these three options. Put together a team, put together um, staff writers who would just write a uh, pitch document for you, Bible for you, with a strong Bible. Like in our case, Supreet wrote a pitch for one of the series that we are now making with one of the OTT platforms. And the pitch document was so strong that we got green, uh, green lit after second meeting. Usually it takes 20 meetings. Now I was after twenty uh, after second because she was just so precise. We practiced with her. We wrote, I think, one week we were writing. Did was give, giving feedback on the pitch document, and Supreet by heart was just practicing in front of the mirror how she would pitch it. Um, you as a producer, you have to do that. You have to practice your in a very public sp speaking, right? How you will just charm them, you know, with your charisma. Then write it down. We did was going through a um, workshop with the creator. Uh, Steve Brancado, the creator of uh, Narcos. And Steve said very clear thing. He said, even now, whenever I'm pitching, I am learning by heart my half a page or one page or two pages. And I'm practicing on different friends. And I see when they are getting bored and I'm changing that. And only then I'm approaching a um, cable or uh, or, the, or any producers or studios, right? Um, we need to get into that practice practice of practicing of our pitches. So as I said, choose subject, choose script, find script. Right now there's so many screenwriters in the industry, find the story or you have your own story. Is it strong? All your friends are saying, oh my God, it's incredible. Great, find a writer who can do that. Um, it can be coincidental that you can be a great writer, but sometimes we realize that maybe we're not, uh, good writers. A lot of directors want also to be writer directors, but it's not necessary. It's better to find who is much better writer than you are. Um, and just to trust that person. So put together as I said, pitch doc, develop it into Bible and start setting up meetings with ODT platforms, with represent, uh, um, with those companies, which are kind of like they deal as a middleman between you and ODT platforms. Like for example, uh, with that, um, uh, Caravan, right? And um, Tulsia, um, so many. Um, and then also start approaching different production houses. Um, Big, ba uh, Big Bad Wolf, which is Anurag's com Anurag Kashyap's company, um, or Gunit Monga's company. So 
because again, all production houses, they're also looking for more stories that they can pitch um, to the platforms and start just messaging different people, start getting on the calls with them. Um, you need to, there's the word educate the market. You need to educate market about yourself. There is Ayush Wadwa, who is this you know, young producer, very talented, hardworking, pushy. He knows exactly what he wants. And even if they won't look at you right now in two years, they will, you know, they will look back at you and they will approach you again. So you need to educate them that you exist. And this is the project that you're working on right now. But of course, the best thing is just, not the best thing, but very interesting experience is just putting um, small indie project together and just executed how we've done with three and a half and Namdebao. After three and a half and now about Bill's next project, his first project as a main producer was three and a half. Second was Namdebao. Third was Pan Nalin's new film, which is the last film show, right? So it's, it's all these things you just need to learn uh, on field. And if you can combine it with the theoretical knowledge is incredible. And I usually also with you, I can share absolutely the most unique thing that I'm extremely proud of this year. I uh, have pushed my team finally create this checklist when uh, we have a ch production checklist and direction checklist. Basically, small things that you make uh, mistakes on the set because there's just so, thousands of small things to take care of from checking a you know, battery on your cameras or your, on your walkie-talkie to putting ropes around the places which has more than one meter high steps because anyone can just fall from there, right? Mm -hmm. So through mistakes and mistakes, we put together huge checklists around like 140 items on each so that my team can try to avoid making mistakes that otherwise they do. So to create this guide for yourself, for yourself, it, it's incredible. Instead of learning on your mistakes, you should learn on other people's mistakes. Makes sense. I have just a couple of follow-up questions, very, very short. Firstly, um, so as a company, we are doing one of the biggest projects next month and financially speaking, it's huge. The team is fine and the, the company really trusts us, but I'm not able to keep, keep calm within myself because hmm. I said that a part of making a decision has to come from the gut. You have to trust that you believe in the decision. You said you have to be somewhere in the middle. I trust the I trust the team and I believe in the vision, but I'm also scared that because this is the biggest project that we have taken as a company, uh, it could make or break our path in the next six months or a year. So how do you maintain that composure? I think it just you need to. It's like how I said, what I said before about when you direct, right? There's a certain homework that you have to be confident about, like uh, script and shot breakdown. This is two. This is your Bible. This is your God to God that you have on set, right? As a producer, same, whether it's a OTT platform, whether it's series, whether it's feature film, you need to be confident that your writing is strong. If you're not sure that it's strong, fuck everything, force your writers to work on it. Put together a focus group, test your script on that. Is, is it a fiction uh, project or is it an ad? It's an ad. So we are executing huh. an ad campaign. So, it's a bunch so of for example, so be absolutely confident about your script for an ad. The fact that, that the agency or the client liked it, it's one thing. You need to know that for you it works, mm -hmm. right? So just go step by step. If you're confident in the script, then find the right team who can execute it. It can be even like your friend who uh, you promised to give them the project. But if you are not showing their skills, depending on their previous work, Fuck it, doesn't matter. Just believe me, it's better to break the news now to someone who's close to you than to work on the project and break your friendship during that project. Hmm. There, are, there were projects when Arita and me, we, we decided not to work together because neither he nor me we were sure about and uh, whether we will be able to deliver it to each other. And because we are also good friends, it's just better to clarify everything from the beginning because once you are in the... Um, in that deep waters, you need to know that your team is not your friends. No, but they are professionals who can execute it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in filmmaking, it's not about friendship and friends whom you trust. It's about professionals whom you trust. It's like doctors, right? You're putting together a team of skillful doctors. So you need to be sure that those uh, doctors are skillful and not just your friends. It's, uh, I mean, it's the second thing. Uh, and 
um, and then communication with the with the client and just put everything on them um it just make them feel that they are taking all the decisions and not you you're just executing and if something is going wrong guys it, it went wrong because this is what the email you wrote to me we executed everything how you wanted it not me we are just executing so to try to make sure that everything is on email um what we are we are doing recently is that someone wanted to do certain changes and we were doing changes and they were like yeah but we don't know how it looks so like yeah yeah you're absolutely right but it just it looks like that because of your changes but let us know if you want to change so you need to also play you need to play games you need to put away your ego especially with the client you need to make the uh, client feel that all the decisions are taken by them and it's their decisions as i said and and team you need to make them feel that this project will teach them so much even if the budget wise they're not getting paid them that much but the experiences or cv that they will get after this project um will give them a lot hmm. got it and can we have that checklist <laughs> yeah if, if if you behave well with supreet she might share it with you i'm going to text her then <laughs> and Hi. where are you know, this is such a yeah. beautiful place this is yeah i'm uh, i'm on, on i'm on location recce wow this is uh... <laughs> okay. okay thank you so much dar for your time it means thank you ayush hi dar can you hear me yes yes hi hi so a lot of times when you are uh, as a storyteller you want to convey a message to the audience and when you start writing it then shoot it and then the end product is something that is very different so how hmm. do you sort of convince yourself and bridge that gap that okay you know maybe i wanted to say something else but my end product is not exactly what i wanted but i am still satisfied with it so how do you sort of deal with that um again it's it, what i said i i told ayush that very important for us to log the script first and um to have a focus group to check that script because your focus group or your just friends will tell you what they feel after the script and this will help you to avoid uh that people interpret your film in a certain way and because you can then change and alter the uh, your script um to make the message clearer but of course it will especially with this with, with our new culture and um we are not uh, i mean we love to judge or we love interpret uh any piece of art depending on our own political social values so all of us we have um we have danger to be criticized or to be interpreted in a certain way i don't think there is any way uh, you can just accept it and just move on uh, whether it's your mistake or it's a completely psycho mindset of the audience who watch it it's just like we you know with ligi I I was saying to my team and I was uh, warning Ritwis that there is a very high chance that we'll get backlash for Ligi because I saw that maybe a um, extreme right audience will feel that oh you know you have a girl just after the wedding she just goes crazy and she dances and um and just to show indian girl uh, like that it's just wrong so I I I saw that we will get backlash for that uh, but we didn't and it, we we got lucky with that but we could so it doesn't mean that i should have done it or i shouldn't know i think we just need to be ready and we need to remember that we are creating what we are creating not just to get <laughs> not just to get approval from the audience we are creating not yeah. to be liked by the audience we are creating to be seen and to be felt by the audience and sometimes feelings that we provoke might be not exactly what we wanted to but we're just sharing piece of us maybe sometimes wrong sometimes making mistakes they always say it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to evolve it's okay to try to polish messages that we are trying to give our audience um yeah i don't know okay thank you thanks, thanks for that question yeah. amrisha uh please go ahead sudhi and meet yourself so hi dad hi yeah so i wanted to ask you so since uh, i have a production house but like we i don't have producers involved so how does one approach producers because it maximum depends on producers then how uh, like i could get 
music videos i could or i could get advertisements to work as a director it has been getting difficult like i have been getting projects on as an assistant director but to work as a work as a production work in my production house and get uh, producers involved that has always been a task so how do you exactly get other production houses to collaborate with you it just uh, like when you are a very new filmmaker does it depend mostly on the story you're telling or the way you're showing it like i think sir it's it's the same thing that i was saying about being a director you need to understand why you you want to be a director and what kind of your stories you want to, to, to tell same thing with production houses um there is a danger that you will just waste a lot of time in uh just setting it up trying to promote it trying to to get projects and uh but you don't have enough team and you need just to answer the questions why do you want to have a production house you know why production house does it only just sounds fancy or it's because you believe that the way how you think um instead of knocking at different people's door you will want you want to create your own story right so you need to understand why you want to have a production house uh, do you have team together do you have team that that you put together or it's because let's say no one sees you as a director but you can produce your own stuff which also can be and in a way also it was part of um, i guess of, of my philosophy and i knew that instead of uh, trying to prove to everyone that i can direct i can just like, put myself to uh, my team together that believes in our project and we can execute it so to have production house you need to have a team right if you don't have a team then you are freelancer you are freelancer as a director as a producer as a ad as a da which is also important because it gives you insight of how production houses work and then in future you can set your your own production house but production house is a house it means that someone lives in that house right so you need to have a team who is ready to be in that house and usually it it can even have just two two people right you and another person that they have um, cinematographer producer director who has who have this stories to tell um you need to understand what will be more productive for you to have your own production house and to chase the projects uh or work for someone and to get more experience right so it all depends which path will give you a richer experience right and you you will evolve more um would you guard for example we knew that uh, i have a team who can execute feature film in a very low budget um then i knew that with the same team i can execute music videos in a, in a lower budget than some other people in the industry and this is how in a way it started um and then i was just like we were sending letters to different companies from agencies to even just directly to the clients offering we create a kick ass deck talking about who we are and how we can how are we different from other people what kind of stories we we are telling just um you need to make people understand why you are unique and why they should work with you and not with other production houses it's it's a, it's a long journey it's a, it's a it's a business venture it's a less creative but it's a business venture and you need to understand that business venture so you you need to read again read about it understand how it works talk to different producers in the country if you uh, don't have experienced producer who will join you because of course of the amount of money that they will get per month you can just get any interns who are keen who want to be a uh, filmmaker so at the same time they interested in business and just start training them right uh, thanks so much for that question so raj kumar uh, had a very very good question that like, how do you work on the art of conversation with the director as an actor especially during after or before shots uh, what are the standard ethics as an act, uh, an actor should follow with a female director when he is opening up about the emotions and expressions which are complex uh, may or may not serve the purpose of the shot uh, Please share an onset experience if you had, if it is okay with you to share. Hmm. I mean, there are so many different ways. If if it's a slightly more advanced production and the budgets are good and you are working with the production house who are taking care of its actors, I always suggest to have um, intimate coordinator or intimate director on the set because um, a, a part of just in. intimacy coordinator in a part of just intimate scenes uh they also they provide help in coordination between director and actor in if, if there is any complicated not just intimate right but just emotional scenes because i do think that 
actor is one of the most challenging professions and it's very important for the director by the way to create a very strong connection with your actor instead of just throwing your ego and showing how cool and bossy you are on the set you need to remember that a good director is a father or mother figure to the actor because an actor is naked he's taking out all he's just peeling off any layers that he has he's naked in front of you and in front of the entire team so if you're pushing him for, him for certain emotions you have to take care of him later on you have to give him or them closure uh, to how they feel and um, and if director don't do that you as an actor i feel you need to explain them through their areas through their deeds or even through the letter how ideally he would want to be approached and uh because actors are not puppets we shouldn't give ourselves to the director or just production house who don't treat us with respect and with understanding and with empathy it's always our choice nowadays to say no and but before doing that i think we can always let them know how we would want to be approached and how we want to be treated uh because the experience needs to be unique and needs to be positive and once you start saying no also industry will learn how to be more sensitive and how to take care better of 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 the actors which is important um about what the standard ethics an actor would follow with the female director i i i don't know i think it's like with any other director you can if if you're a director's experience i don't think that they have gender um it's it always comes down to just empathy and politeness and if you approach your director with that um there shouldn't be any awkward or unusual conversations because a uh, smart or just normal director uh will know that we're dealing with physicality which can be tricky with emotional state can be tricky mm, and they need to be ready to deal with that so yeah just just politeness hard work and um and and being outspoken of things that disturbs you on the set it's very important don't bottle them up or if your director you feel that complicated or tricky person try to reach them through their assistance or through their ds uh, just don't keep anything inside you that you feel uncomfortable of Manas has this question that uh, how involved are you as a director in the edit mainly in the shot selection and cutting points and and does the client get involved in the edit as well oh i mean of course client will involve in the edit sometimes i have very lucky edits and clients don't change anything and they accept everything in uh, the way it is sometimes we are going just back and forth with like 10 20 uh, edits and uh, if it doesn't change your story you can you can and it, it, if it actually makes it better great if it makes it worse you, of course you have to put your, your feet down but also remember that what if you are wrong you know always deal uh from the space of what if my truth is not the only truth show to as many people as possible see what they are saying i always see if more than 10 people even sometimes more than 5 people point at exactly the same thing maybe it's too long or it's too boring mm, maybe it is that maybe it is a way how to work around how to make it better um and i am very involved in the edit my short breakdown is almost like shot by shot uh for me it's very important when my editor he cuts first edit or second edit then i sit um and i sometimes even it's it comes down to frame by frame like can can just 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 one frame or two frames more and i know it will not affect anything but somehow for me there's a beat or invisible uh, rhythm that that's important and i love it i i love to be very 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 close in work with edit as well as sound design and color correction which is also pain yeah so with this we come to the end of today's session uh thank you so much for doing this uh, uh dar and thank you to everyone for the, uh, for the questions and thank you for everyone who, uh, who came in uh this is great uh, great talking to you thank you so much thank you so much i it, it, it was great it was very interesting i really hope that i uh, guys didn't waste your time because i mean you see no matter how many people you will listen um everyone has their own journeys 
sometimes they fail sometimes they succeed you never know what kind of films will make next time you will make next time i will make next time the only thing is we can just promise each other do we need to continue to grow no matter what we need to fucking read watch good films more read and watch good films read 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 professional literature fiction and explore and just to make as many films as possible just to work on our craft instead of just complaining about what kind of films we see i don't know netflix let's be the creators which will be creating better stuff on netflix can we write better than we complain about sometimes i don't know so let's continue creating let's remember that we are egoistic creatures sometimes our animal nature comes up when someone is threatening us someone saying are you sure it will be good and like i don't think that the light is good here like what do you mean what do you mean and we're just snapping on those people that's when we to create a very empathetic cozy sweet environment when everyone feel that yes they're working hard but they also growing along with you because all of us as we keep discussing we will die this is the only truth that we know so let journey until our death let's make it happening funny sweet cozy and exciting journey not just for ourselves but also for people whom we are inspiring around and it's not only, not only our friends and our um family but it's also our enemies or people who don't believe in us great more more people don't believe in us is great because they give us that energy that we can just use for for better creation and inspire them let's just continue creating pushing ourselves and evolve and support each other that was yeah neil of the other that's great that was, that was that was profound thank you <laughs> and just the last thing i just remember one thing no matter how much you struggle as a filmmaker no matter no matter whether you're like right now 18 or uh, or you're more more experienced filmmaker and you listen to this like hey what you think it doesn't matter it's okay great you know but the fact that you're here i'm very grateful for your time but let's support each other when um i don't know ayush's film will or whatever ad will come out let's help let's share it on our instagram even if we don't like it much doesn't matter you know doesn't matter because more creations we create more projects we will get if supreet's next feature film will go to can i'm like mm, but my family didn't want to can and she just she was my assistant doesn't matter because it gives me opportunity next year maybe also to go to can because can will be like oh wow you know these indians they just make really good films right and then they will look differently the way how south asian film have created names for themselves we need to support each other even when we see some really shit netflix film i'm like ah, yeah but maybe let's give that a watch or let's just more because more people see more projects will be created around us you see right now we are having so many more actually better and better film merging here and there look at the south indian industry because they support each other because actors big stars they are actually putting money in producing uh, completely independent films and promote let's promote each other let's help each other of course if 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 you don't like something completely i'm not saying that you have to promote it but just respectfully keep quiet <laughs> or just give feedback to the creator you know you don't need to share it but let's just at least energetically support each other because my growth is your growth your growth is my growth sure thank you guys it was thank extremely you, exciting thank you so <laughs>